everyone and welcome to our new discounting playbook bootcamp. I'm Hannah and I'm a partnerships manager here at Loyalty Lion and this time we're, we're joined by Rich from Reviews.io. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Rich. Thank you for having me. Uh, Rich is here to tell us about using Reviews.io to provide alternatives to discounting that will continue to maximise sales over the holiday season. So Rich, if you don't mind, let's dive in and talk about your first strategy. Uh, yeah, I guess staying on the top of the topic is is about discounting. I think um, there's definitely solutions to discount, and sometimes you know the f- discounts are inat- in- in- inatable. Like people would want to see a discount. So for us, we think it's really important, you know, to to sort of celebrate the customers that you already have. So you really want to look at ways of not just sending out the discount, but ways in which that discount can bring more data. So one of our biggest strategies is use those big discounts as a carrot to sort of gain more more content, more review uh, reviews, more images, potentially even more video, because you have an opportunity to reach out to those customers that have purchased, but haven't necessarily left you any content. So by giving a, a, a huge discount, whether it's site-wide or it's on a catalog, um, you have a great opportunity to sort of say, hey, you've, you've not left a review yet, but here's 30% off the next purchase if you, if you do leave a review. Um, you know, and that will really, really drive sort of product reviews um, and product content as well that you can you know, use um, during the Black Friday. I mean, you could run this before the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend and generate more content um, for that period. And, you know, it's what value is that discount bringing? Are you just trying to create more sales or you're trying to create more sales and create more content at the same time? So the reason to sort of dangle that carrot is to do exactly that, to drive revenue, but also you know, to drive content. And you mentioned videos there. So uh, what benefit would the video, even video reviews have over just like a standard review? Video is really interesting. Um, I guess it gives you more of an insight. I think everyone agrees that video gives more content. Um, And I guess when we first started doing video uh, reviews, we thought it might be, you know, a descriptive, detailed um, review of the products when actually it's just a a very nice insight into how the product's used and, you know, an insight into your users, uh, your customers as well. So, you know, that sort of content is invaluable and it's going to be, um, had a lot more you know, credibility to say just a text review alone. Um, so if you're having positive sort of um, content come through uh, that, the video, then it's, 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 it's going to have a bigger impact than, you know, text uh, or just images themselves. And then obviously having like that user generated content makes it um, a lot more relatable for customers because they're being used by real people in real environments as opposed to just being videoed in like a studio where you take the product photography yeah it comes down to that credibility again like it's going to be more credible than say an advert that you spend thousands on trying to sell the item if you've got your customers um they're essentially acting as brand advocates uh, yes selling your product for you and doing at a level that's you know that's more probably in tune with your customers than say an ad that's done by yourselves yeah no that's really interesting yeah I really agree there that um the video is more engaging and it has a lot more impact as well that's great so um I, yeah I can really see how useful that would be um it would be great to speak about now about your second strategy so focusing on the end games so it'd be great if you could talk about that So this goes back down to actually the guys that are just going to run a discount. Um, You know, in in some fields, you you have to communicate to your customers. They're expecting a discount at that time. So, you know, you're going to have to follow suit in some cases. What we're trying to say here is make sure, you know, you've got those those review invitations laid out and you're you're asking them to create an account at the end of it. Um, Why do that? Because, you know, it, allows you then to ask ask for reviews make if you haven't got reviews in place then you know you're you're missing out on a huge opportunity to sort of build that user generated content as we said in the first point with the carrot dangling in front you know that's trying to generate that content beforehand but you know on the flip side some brands just have to discount to compete 
Um, but what we're saying there is if you are going to discount, you know, ensure that you do have these things in place, you know, uh, more sales, more user generated content. That's really the sort of metric you want to be looking at. Um, so I guess one and two are very similar. I guess dangling the carrots beforehand, you know, focusing on the end game is very much, you know, make sure you've got your, your, your shipping in place and everything's that you're selling as well is is in stock. Like you want to also manage customers' expectations. So if you do have this huge strategy to drive content, you know, make sure that, that if you have a very, very, very successful Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that, you know, you can manage uh, manage those expectations um, so that the content that does come through is all positive. So it's sort of like making sure that you have like a long-term strategy just yeah. as opposed to like your just your Black Friday, Cyber Monday strategy, something that um, lasts the full customer life cycle rather than just having them for one second and then losing them. Yeah, definitely. And there's, you know, you see so many shops these days with such a, an involved tech stack. So you've got Shopify customers that have integrations with Loyalty Lion, Reviews, Clavio, And, you know, you want to make sure you've got, if you've got these tools, you're creating useful flows. So you've got the point of transaction that they, they are checking out where, when the fulfillment's completed and then when the review's sent. And then, you know, you can set up a flow to say, if they've had a positive experience, you know, then ask them for content afterwards. So you're actually only gaining user content from, you know, positive sort of um, transactions or, or, or happy customers at the end of the day. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, just moving on to your third strategy. So keeping returns down and supporting purchase decision with review attributes. Could you talk through that a little bit, please? Yeah, so we're really excited about reviews. because I can <laughs> tell. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, collecting reviews is the easy part, uh, we believe. And we think that, you know, the content that you, you gain from your customers, you need to go a step further. So um, obviously there's been a huge shift online. Um, everyone's trying to give you more information about the product. Now, that information has to come from your customers, from their experiences, from your customers' attributes, whether they're six foot tall or they're five foot tall. Um Asking them how a, 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 their garment fitted, depending on what size they purchased against, you know, uh, what they received. Did it match the sizes that that was said on the website? You know, this sort of content really helps that end buyer sort of understand the products that they're buying a lot more in much granular detail as well. So, you know, you really want to um, give give um, customers that that added information via the review solution because it's a great opportunity to ask customers because they're already leaving your review. So, you know, it's the case of did the fit, uh, did the top fit as you, as, as it, um, did the top fit uh, as you, as it intended, like the size, did it run too small? Did it run too large? They may leave you a five star review because they've had a brilliant experience, but you know, you want a bit more information when you're asking for product reviews, because it's going to really help that end user when they're looking um, to, to, to purchase those products with added information. So there's a whole array of different things that you can set up. So being smart in that sense and collecting customer and product attributes is only going to improve um, that knowledge given to the customers looking to check out. And it will just give them confidence. And that's ultimately going to help them with uh, your, your conversion rate. And you know it will make your marketing efforts go a lot further helps you sort of um, like appeal to a wider audience as well because not everyone's the same size or the same shape or yeah, is ex yeah. or has the same expectations. So having those different attributes really sort of helps you, yeah, appeal to them on a deeper, a more personal level. Yeah, and product developers, people who are, you know, creating these products, it's going to give them the information to say it is doing everything we expected it to do or actually we need to review this product and improve it. You know, this this information is invaluable to so many, so many big brands out there. And you're getting it directly from your customers uh, yeah. just by asking a few additional questions at the review process. And like you said, if they're already leaving the review, then throwing in a few more questions is really, really valuable. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and they're already committed to sort of giving you their time. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they'll, they'll, they'll be happy to sort of 
give you their measurements and additional information. And it's also optional as well. So if, if they've, they've given you a review, you're not going to lose that review because you've asked them too many questions. Uh, we do give them the opportunity to still just submit a text, a text feedback. Yeah. Cool. No, that's really interesting. Um, that makes complete sense. The more detail, the better, really, isn't yeah. it? Cool. Um, thanks so much for sharing. Um, that's all the questions I had for today. Um, just one more thing. Where can the viewers go to learn more about Reviews.io? So like any, any, any good any business, we've got a website. But, uh, you know, we've, we've built our front pages to give you business solutions. So whether you're, um, you offer a service or an e-commerce brand, we try to share different solutions and we try and give as many examples as possible that we have of our current customers to show their successes, the problems they had and how we overcame them and, you know, and where they're going after reviews as well. Like uh, we're only a small cog in their, in their, in their, in their mission. So we, we like to celebrate not just how we've helped them, but how other techs and integrations are really working with them, uh, whether they're agency partners, what issues they had, and, you know, how it all came together. So it's not just, yeah, user reviews. It's, you know, about how, how the cogs move and, you know, really get involved of, you know, what problems they were trying to resolve. Yeah, and, like, giving evidence and linking to case studies and things like that. Yeah, exactly right. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time today. Um, really enjoyed having you on to speak and thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for the next part of our new discounting playbook bootcamp. <laughs>